Hello, this is Redithin, and welcome to TBU Season 4, Week 4, against Leo, aka Six Foot Hacks, coach of the Durham Dridgens. Dr Durham Dridgens. <sighs> Goddamn alliteration names. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, um, so, uh, last two weeks in the TBU, we uh, we lost. Last week against Rizzy Pow, and the week before that, uh, for uh, due to Alex, um, aka Onesie Minette, just due to... Uh, um, unfortunate circumstances, um, last week I played, I did not prep well, and then the week before that, um, I prepped better, but, um, we had a bit of a mishap with hacks, but anyway, we're back, back week four, looking for a win. Um, this, I'm actually going to combine the, uh, team builder again with the, um, battle in this video, so, um, if you want to skip to the battle, um, I'll maybe remember to, uh, put a timestamp there, if not, I'm sorry, but... Um, yeah, so the team builder portion is going to be on showdown, but the battle is on Wi-Fi this time, so uh, don't worry about that. We could have the nice, uh, nice, sexy animations back. But uh, yeah, so uh, let's go into the team. Leo is undefeated, 3-0. and um, So yeah, a lot of pressure on us, um, of course, dropping the last two games to kind of pull back in the standings. So uh, really, uh, really, uh, really a tough opponent here. So, um, and of course, uh, champion of the UCL. Um, big, big deal, big deal <laughs> this week. Um, so yeah. So first up, we got Mega Pinsir because Mega Pinsir is always gonna be pretty much the star anytime I'm building because it just it just wrecks it just wrecks stuff. Um, so yeah, we're running uh, Return, Quick Attack, Earthquake, and Swords Dance. Uh, Jolly Nature, enough speed to outspeed uh, Shaman or Max Speed Shaman in case he was some like uh, crazy Koba Berry set that uh, could wreck my life. But anyway, so um, of course, pretty much what you expect. Um, I actually ran a uh, Earthquake over Close Combat. And the only reason I did that was just because, um, uh, Registeel. And the reason I ran Earthquake is because I figured, um, he would expect me to run CC, so there's a chance he would run Shoppleberry. And so, uh, just in case, I decided to run Earthquake because, um, it shouldn't matter, uh, anyway, um, uh, if I get prior damage on it to begin with. So I was like, you know what, might as well just put a... Earthquake on there instead. Just try to avoid that altogether. Or if he tries to make like some cheeky switch into a Jolteon or something. Um, yeah. So I, I just figured Earthquake would be better. Um, next up we have uh, Raiko. AV Raiko with Thunderbolt, Signal Beam, HP Grass, and Volt Switch. Uh, enough speed to outspeed uh, Infernape, I believe. And, um, or no, actually, Tauros? Tyler, Infernape or Tauros? Um, actually, actually, no, I think it was Infernape because. Uh, when I was building, I actually, um, I actually was going off the wrong thing, and so I didn't, I thought Taurus was on the bench, so I, uh, so I kind of build that a bit wrong, but, um, so this might still have to be Taurus, because I think there's only, like, one speed point difference, but it might actually speed tie. Um, actually, you know what, let's check that right now. Um, oh wait, no, I can't, that'll show spoilers, never mind, never mind. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, this thing was pretty much my, uh, my answer to, uh, Jolteon, because... Uh, of course, as we've uh, talked about previously, fast electrics just destroy me, or just electrics in general. Any electric that I can outspeed up, pincer mainly. Um, and I have uh, I have Mudsdale, of course, but um, you know they electro types often run uh, coverage for ground types in like the form of HP Grass or HP Ice. So I was like, you know what, Raikou is always a safe switch in um, into Jolteon, and um, Signal Beam does quite a bit of damage. Um, I ran a Signal Beam over. Um, Shadow Ball, just because uh, I wanted uh, something better to deal with Shaman, because um, Shaman, uh, with what depending on the move set it runs, I can have a uh, trouble switching into it. So I was like, you know, let's run a Signal Beam for Shaman. It's only five power difference, and it also hits uh, Necrozma super effectively. Um, and I was like, you know what, that's pretty nice. Um, and then finally, we have HP Grass, and this is for Seismitoad because Seismitoad actually does put kind of put a number on my team, especially if it's uh, defensive. Then it can uh, then it can possibly one v one pincer. And one v one a lot of my uh, a lot of my team, so it's like you know what uh, that's kind of crucial coverage. Um, let's get that in over something else that would uh, deal with this team or like HP Ground to deal with uh, Jolteon or whatever. So like yeah, HP Grass is the nice thing. And then we got Thunderbolt and Volt Switch of course because those are like mandatory on this thing. Um, next up we have Banded uh, Mudsdale actually, and this is kind of an interesting set: Earthquake, Heavy Slam, Close Combat, and Toxic. And uh, this is pretty much Earthquake and Heavy Slam. And then let's slap on two moves because I have nothing better to put on here. Um, and basically, if you if you look at his team, uh, literally literally his only switch in to Banded Mudsdale Earthquake is Shaman, 
Uh, and Shaman actually gets two KO'd by Heavy Slam. So, um, pretty much, or uh, or even close combat. Um, I actually ran. Uh, I actually put both of them on just in case uh, I ran into a situation with like Reggie Steel or something, because uh, close combat hits Reggie Steel super effectively, of course, as well. So um, it was just kind of depending on uh, the situation I could go for either. Um, but yeah, Earthquake, Banded Earthquake, just absolutely destroys his team. And um, if you look at what he has, um, you know he has Necrozma, that uh, that can't really touch this thing that much. Um, of course, without setup, um, Infernape, which uh, can only echo this thing if it has uh, Grass Knot. Um, he has the uh, Mimikyu, which usually does not run Wood Hammer. I didn't expect him to run Wood Hammer, um, but outside of Wood Hammer, it can't really do that much um, to it. Uh, Jolteon, of course, uh, just straight up dies to it, and um, even like an HP Grass will uh, not be uh, not be doing. Uh, it won't it won't uh, be able to K KO this thing. I know that for sure. Um, issue grass or HB ice because it's pretty bulky. Um, Size Toad gets two at KO'd. Um, Rage Steel gets gets uh, O code. Tauros gets uh, O code, I believe. And then of course Zork, Zork does. So even uh, even a uh, max physically defensive Necrozma uh, has a really really good chance of dying into its earthquake. So he really just had no switchings for it. And then finally I put Toxic on there just in case, um, just in case he was like some weird Necrozma set, and uh, I was able to just uh, slap a Toxic on that, or just when I don't feel like predicting and just get a Toxic off him. So like. Um, I really had nothing better. Uh, next up, we have Skarmory, and this is Stealth Rock, Defog, Roost, and Brave Bird. Uh, careful Nature to switch into Scalds from Seismic Toad, and um, and uh, HP Fires from Shaman, and all that. And then uh, it was actually, um, and uh, what was I gonna go with that? Um, oh yeah, and uh, I really wanted this thing to deal with uh, Mimikyu in case I decided to bring that because uh, SD Mimikyu. Does kind of just quite a bit if I'm unable to uh, break the disguise. So I was like, you know, this is a safe switch into that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just uh, you know set up the rocks because he actually has uh, no removers because uh, Hitman Chan's on the bench. So um, I figured once I get up rocks, you know, it'll make things much easier. It actually guarantees the two KO on a Necrozma with Earthquake from Mudsdale. So it's like, yeah, uh, rocks will be nice. And we finally got Brave Bird because it uh, hurts Shaman, Infernape, uh, pretty much his entire team, not named Reggie Steel or Jolteon, does not appreciate a uh, Brave Bird. And uh, next up we have uh, Subtoxic Suicune. Uh, max physically defensive with Scald Roar, Toxic, and Substitute. And um, uh, this thing uh, was pretty much my dedicated, really my more dedicated switch into uh, Seismitoad um, and uh, Necrozma and Infernape. Uh, it just it just did a lot of uh, just did a lot of work um, against his team pretty much. He didn't really have too much to deal with this outside of Jolteon. Um, so of course we got the Scald because uh, damage and then we got uh, the the other moves, Aurora, because uh, I like I said I was afraid of Mimikyu. I did not want that setting up. Same with uh, Necrozma. Necrozma can set up too. Uh, Toxic because it'll wear down stuff such as Necrozma or Shaman or um, uh, or the other stuff that gets recovery and even uh, gives me a chance to uh, hit Seismitoad with something because uh, Water Absorb. And then we have Sub because I'm pretty much guaranteed to to get up a sub on a uh, Seismitoad or. Um, Reggie Steel actually, because Reggie Steel can't break this up with Seismic Toss because base 100 HP, and um, uh, oh god, come on! <laughs> All right, my, I'm I'm looking at my phone on this, um, and uh, even uh, Necrozma, depending on the set, it can uh, set up a sub. So, um, yeah, I figured that would be nice. And finally, we have a uh, Shoddy, the Skun Tank, um, near uh, near max HP. I just ran enough speed to outspeed. Um, oh god, what was it? <laughs> It was, uh, oh god, it was, okay, it was, it was something that was, um, oh, it was something, it was to outspeed anything that tried to sweet, uh, speed creep Suicune, that's what it was. Um, we got Pursuit, Sucker Punch, Crunch, and Taunt, uh, Air Balloon, and I'm actually running the Air Balloon because, uh, in case, because this was kind of like my lead, so in case he decided to lead with, uh, Necrozma, Seismitoad, or Registeel, because those are all his Wreckers, um, I could taunt those without having to worry, worry about Earthquake from any of them. Then we got Pursuit because uh, Necrozma was kind of a, a threat and kind of stood it in the way of, uh, uh, could possibly stand in the way of uh, Pinsir. And then we have Sucker Punch in case Mimikyu or uh, Jolteon gets out of hand. And finally, uh, Crunch. And uh, I, I was debating going uh, either Poison Jab or Fire Blast over this. Um, Poison Jab, of course, gives me like pretty much no chance to really hit uh, uh, Reggie Steel. Um, however, it does uh, hit Shaman pretty nicely. Um, Fire Blast uh, hits both, however, it really just does absolutely nothing to either depending on the set because base of 71 special attack. So I decided just to go for Crunch in the end because I already have a bunch of uh, attack investment and it uh, gives me options against Mimikyu in case uh, he just decides to set up on my Sucker Punches. So 
Um, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's the team. Um, looking at Leo's team, um, really what I was afraid of the most, pretty much, was uh, Mimikyu, actually. Um, Mimikyu and Necrozma, pretty much, because um, both of those could set up and uh, do damage on me if I was not careful. And uh, I really just wanted to make sure that didn't happen. So uh, a lot of my team either has... Uh, most of my team either has uh, stuff to stop setup or revenge them. Um, just, or just do like a lot of damage. Or uh, or in Suicune's case, uh, just be able to roar it out. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to avoid being as... I just really, really wanted to avoid being passive. That's why I decided to go Banded Mudsdale over like some, uh, some uh, more defensive set or something. Uh, the only really passive thing is Skarmory, but um, I wasn't really planning on keeping that thing in for long on much anyway. So, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, let's just go right into the battle then. And, um, oh yeah, I actually got to switch recordings because I'm doing, uh, doing Wi-Fi again this week. So, uh, I'll see you there. All right. So here we are at the battle. And um, looking at what he brought, he brought Seismitoad, Necrozma, uh, Red D Steel, Jolteon, um, Tauros and uh, Infernape. So uh, immediately right off the bat, what I noticed is that he did not bring Shaman. So uh, that means that he has literally zero uh, Mudsdale switchins. So that is uh, that's actually fantastic, um, because uh, I just could click Earthquake and pretty much uh, take something, either take something down to half or just completely Oko it. So um, really, really nice. Um, Really, really nice to have that, especially with uh, Pinsir in the back, because really his only switches to Earthquake are Necrozma and Seismitoad, uh, both which uh, stand in Pinsir's way uh, a bit, so it can weaken those. So I was uh, that was kind of my game plan. Wear us down, bring in Mudsdale as much as I can, and just uh, spam Earthquake, and then uh, see, and then see what I can uh, clean up with from there. So uh, yeah, so uh, let's go right into it. As um, here we go, we got this nice, uh, nice. Nice uh, lineless HD again. As uh, I lead it with a uh, Skun Tank, like I said I would. As uh, he leads with uh, Seismitoad. So here I'm just going to taunt it because the worst he can do is uh, is Scald. And um, of course we can get the burn, but uh, I was, you know, let's let's not uh, let's not mess. <laughs> let's not uh, let's not uh, get that right off the bat. So I'm actually going to taunt the Rage Steel, which is really nice. So um, pretty much I'm just free to switch into Mudsdale. As he can't Toxic, he can't set up rocks. We're just Gucci to here to go into Mudsdale. As um, he goes for the um, he goes for the Seismic Toss. Which is, uh, I'm a max HP, so I don't really care much about that. You see that uh, glorious animation. We get the stamina boost uh, to boot, which is nice. So, uh, pretty much he has to switch out here because I'm banned at Earthquake. Ridgy Steel is not living, living that. Um, as he goes into uh, Seismitoad again here, I'm just going to go for the Earthquake. Uh, and actually, this thing tells me that this thing was uh, max defense because that did half. And, um, god, yeah, <laughs> half damage to a uh, max defense. Uh, size of toad. So that's pretty nice. So here I'm actually gonna make a really really cheeky switch here I'm gonna go into a uh, Raikou because I figured there was no way he was gonna go for a uh, for a ground move I figured he was either gonna go for the water move or like knockoff or something um, I, I just I just did not think that he was going to go for the ground move with uh, Mudsdale there because um, as he actually does go for the uh, Knockoff and uh Oh yeah, uh, Skarmory as well. I, I figured Skarmory seemed like the obvious switch there. So uh, here I'm actually going to Volt Switch and uh, make another cheeky play back to back as he goes into um, his uh, Reggie Steel because I knew that um, just switching in Raikou means I absolutely had to have HP Grass and I figured there was no way he was going to switch stay in on that uh, and I didn't want uh, Reggie Steel getting up rocks. So I'm just going to keep pressuring this uh, Reggie Steel here as I bring out Mudsdale again. And now he really literally has uh, no switch ins to uh, Bandit Earthquake. So. Um, yeah, he's just gonna get up uh, his rocks here, and he's gonna let uh, Reggie Steel go down. So uh, really, really good uh, start to this match here, as um, that uh, that Raiko play really, uh, really uh, both Raiko plays really uh, kind of put me at an advantage here, as uh, he's forced to lose his uh, Reggie Steel. So now uh, once I get uh, Defog up with uh, Skarmory, then uh, he has no rocks for the rest of the match, which is awesome because of course we have Pinsir, and uh, Pinsir absolutely hates self rock. So uh, exactly that's exactly what I'm gonna try to do here. As I go into uh, Skarmory, because Skarmory can actually take any hit from uh, from this Seismitoad. So I'm really not afraid of it. He can get the burn, but all I really want from this thing is to be able to get Defog. Since he doesn't have the uh, he doesn't have the Mimic use, so I'm not really afraid of him uh, setting up with that or anything. So, um, yeah, so he's going to get those leftovers. And uh, here I'm just going to click the Defog. Easiest Defog of my life. As uh, it turns out, I actually outspeed him. So, um, yeah, he was EV'd to uh, underspeed uh, Skarmory, which I guess makes sense. 
Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I haven't watched his uh, team builder yet, so I don't know if he had an Earth Power or not. But um, uh, if he did, that would make sense because once I get the Roost on, then he can just uh, KO Scar him with uh, Earth Power. So that's a uh, that's uh, definitely why he did that. Um, I would assume. So uh, here at Max, instead of getting my own, on my own rocks, I'm actually gonna hard switch into Suicune here. Um, I figured he was either gonna predict the Roost or uh, or just go for the Scald, and I was like, you know what, Suicune's a nice switch in here, because uh, I figured he would not go for knockoff there, and I just didn't want my Suicune to lose his leftover. So I figured this is the best time to switch it in, so I can uh, set up the sub and uh, get up a Toxic on something, whatever he decides to come in, because of course, Reggie still's gone, so he has nothing to uh, absorb Toxics anymore, and. Um, uh, yeah, um, I didn't go for the Scald, of course, because water absorbs, so it's, we're, we're not we're not messing around with that. As it goes into a Jolteon, so I can kind of scout for what kind of Jolteon this is, um, whether he uh, is choice in any way, if he's Life Orb, or uh, uh, whatever he may be. So um, he's just going to go for the T-Bolt to break my sub, as uh, I'm going to get the uh, Toxic up here, um, because uh, why not? Free Toxic on something is always nice. Um, so yeah, Jolteon is toxic uh, however, it reveals that he is not a uh, life orb or anything. So I'm still, uh, I'm still uh, at this point. I assume this thing is, uh, is possibly a choice, but I didn't really want to risk that and go to Mudsdale. So uh, here, I'm just gonna make the, uh, I'm gonna make the, uh, the safer switch this time and actually go into, uh, go into the uh, Raikou, um, because Raikou, of course, is salt vested. Um, actually, no, he lost the, the salt vest, but it's still uh, bulky as hell uh, on the special side. So. Um, is he just gonna go, uh, okay, get the pressure. Now he's gonna go for the, uh, Baton Pass. So, uh, he reveals to me that this is actually not a, uh, it's not a, uh, choice, uh, Jolteon, which is nice to know for later, uh, in case I have Mudsdale out and, uh, I'm relying on, like, a roll with, uh, Hidden Power or something. Um, but he's actually gonna, uh, Heart Switch here into Jolteon, um, as I go for the Volt Switch. I knew there's a chance he could do that, but, uh, Jolteon was pretty much at full anyway, so I really had, uh, no reason not to go for that. Um, I... I I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really care about um, him getting the Volt Absorb at that range. But uh, here, um, I'm just gonna kind of scout to see what he does. And I'm gonna go for the uh, Signal Beam as... Um, uh, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, there's the Toxic up. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the battle kind of uh, froze there. That was weird. Um, okay, but I'm gonna go for the uh, Signal Beam as uh, this thing will take it down just to uh, just about half with the uh, Toxic damage. So I know that he can't live another one uh, with a Toxic up so um i think i just go for uh, the signal beam again here uh yeah i could have gone for the uh, volt switch however i didn't really want to give him the volt absorb boost because that would might put him back in range of being able to live a uh, plus two quick attack from pincer and then i didn't really want to do that so um he actually goes into size of teeter and i go for the hidden power grass surprise um okay and i did that because um uh and i did that because i uh thought that um, Jolteon couldn't really do to me anything at that point, so I was like, you know, if, just in case he decides to switch into the uh, Seismitoad there, I can set, catch it on the uh, switch. Maybe he thinks I didn't have it or something, but I kept it on switch, so Seismitoad's now gone, which is brilliant. So uh, here I go into uh, Skuntank as I predict either the Earthquake or the Psychic move, both of which uh, Shy does not care about. I'm actually going to go for the Pursuit here, uh, predicting the switch, however, he, uh, Leo is smarter than that. And he's actually just going to uh, break my balloon here with the uh, Smart Strike. So he's revealed Smart Strike and Earthquake. So at this point, I wasn't really sure what kind of Necrozma this was. However, it seemed to be possibly more of an offensive one. Um, as uh, he's going to go into the uh, Infinite Pier on the uh, on the crunch, um, but I just was happy to get uh, damage on that. Um, and uh, here I'm going to uh, switch into Suicune because Suicune uh, can pretty much take anything from this thing. It's not like a banded uh, Thunder Punch. Um, yeah, he's gonna go for the uh, close combat here, and uh, I figure there is a chance he could possibly have the uh, Bloom Doom because he hasn't really revealed an item at this point, so I wasn't really sure what it was. I, it, it appeared to be adamant by that damage. However, I wasn't uh, I wasn't too sure because percentages are you can't really sell percentages are on a uh, Wi-Fi. So instead of uh, switching to the Skarm, I was just decided you know what, let's uh, just keep Skarming it or tweaking it and uh, actually go for the uh, Toxic here, which was a bit of a misplay. Um, I really should have gone for Scald. The only reason I did not go for a uh, Scald there was because uh, I was afraid of the Necrozma coming in and uh, getting the burn, which, um, I mean, it's a physical Necrozma, so I probably shouldn't have been afraid of that, but I, just in case it was like some crazy weird, like, I don't know, like rest talk, not rest talk, but like some crazy like moonlight set, um, and then I couldn't wear it down with Toxic and it would just stall me out. I, I, was, I was afraid of that, possibly, because I, I still had, I only saw two moves from it, so I had no idea what it was gonna do, so. Uh, yeah, I just decided to play it safe and go for the Toxic there. Um, uh, like I said, I would have gotten the kill with Scald and uh, things would have been good, but, uh, uh, it's whatever. So, um, 
And yeah, Infernape's going to uh, take the uh, poison damage. As I'm going to go into uh, Mega Pinsir here, and I'm going to uh, Mega Evolve and go for the Quick Attack. Because uh, he's minus defense, even if he's like Koba Berry or something, then uh, he just dies with Quick Attack. Figured that was the safest bet. Um, I knew that he could possibly switch in Tauros or uh, Necrozma and like Revenge Me or something, but I wasn't really too afraid of those. Um, goes gonna go for the quick attack, and he does—he does really. He does have the Cobra Berry, but of course because of the because uh, he's uh, weakened and uh, the, the uh, defense drops with close combat, he wasn't living that. So uh, here goes the Tauros, and I figured this thing would probably go for uh, Rock Slide, either or Rock Slide or um, Rock Climb, and I didn't really want to deal with either of those. So I'm gonna go into Skarmory. He actually reveals he has a Wild Charge, which is interesting. Um, and that actually doesn't, uh, that actually doesn't Oko Pinsir, um, and for Wild Charge, so, uh, I'm not really sure why he had that, per se, I mean, it makes sense for Skarmory, but, uh, he got Fire Blast, too, I, I, I don't know why he was running a Wild Charge, but, uh, anyway, it's just gonna take me off the Iron Head, um, I could've gone into a Mudsdale here and made the play of the Sentry, but I just didn't want to risk it with a Mudsdale, since it's still, he still has no switch-ins for it, uh, and speaking of no switch-ins for Mudsdale, I'm um, <laughs> just, just, you know, again, spam Earthquake here, as the Rock Climb takes me down, uh, to, uh, to, uh, in red, but, um, I'm able to live it easily, get the stamina boost, and then kill with Earthquake. And uh, here he's only got a Necrozma and a Jolteon left. And at this point, I knew Jolteon had no uh, no um, moves that weren't electric type, so it couldn't actually hit me. So his only play here was to go into Necrozma. And uh, here at this point, I didn't know what he had, so I just decided to go for Earthquake because I figured um, I could possibly live anything if it wasn't like a psychic move. Um, even with a Psycho, psycho Cat, I probably could live it. But he reels, of course, he's actually the uh, Corkscrew Crash. He's got a Steelium Z. I'm not really sure what that was for. Um, I'm guessing um, Florges, um, because his team does kind of get walled by... Not really, I, actually, I don't, I don't know why he was running that, but uh, either way, it works, because it took out Mudsdale and uh, uh, preserved him, or in, uh, uh, gave him a, a chance to uh, come back in this game. But, um, so I'm actually going to go into Raikou, and I'm going to click Signal Beam, and decided to go into Raikou instead of, uh, instead of um, Skuntank there, because... Um, I didn't know if I could live an Earthquake for that, uh, from that range. I didn't know what his EVs were or anything. So I was like, you know, let's go for the Signal Beam. I uh, put actually put it in range of a Sucker Punch or a or Crunch, depending on what it goes through. But he actually reveals he's Autotomize. So, um, yeah, I see what kind of a... I finally see what kind of a Necrozma the set. Because I was playing this th playing around this thing very carefully. Because I had no idea what it was do, what it was going to do. But now I know that it is uh, indeed an offensive set. So uh, Rekka is just going to go down here. And I'm going to go into a Skun Tank because I know Sucker Punch can kill from there. Um, and yeah, I figured um, he could just keep spamming up but uh, and that could be potentially bad. But he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't end up. Uh, he doesn't end up predicting that. So I'm going to get rid of him with the Sucker Punch. And here uh, I can sense the Jolteon's toxic. I can just keep spamming Sucker Punch because of course it can't toxic me. And eventually it would die. But uh, he just goes for the attack, and I take it out anyway. So uh, yeah, we beat. Uh, we beat uh, Leo. Uh, and his uh, and his undefeated team. So uh, undefeated no longer, as we get a huge important win, a huge rebound victory. Um, and that's uh, 2 -0. Like I said, I could have uh, I could have made some uh, potentially uh, a couple better plays, such as taking out the uh, the Infernape with the uh, Scald, or um, making the really really uh, cheeky switch into a Mud Sail on the Wild Charge Tauros. But I mean that was that would have been dumb. I, that was a that was a bad play. Or um, potentially scouting for uh, the Smart Strike on the Krasma, which also I didn't really need to do. I, I you know, I, I played it safe in the end. I played really risky in the beginning when I needed to, and uh, pretty much once I got the uh, upper hand there, I just kept, uh, I just played it safe because I really really had no reason to play uh, play risky. But uh, yeah, so um, that's the battle. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed, please leave a like, or, or subscribe, or um, subscribe to Leo if you haven't already, but I mean, he's got like, <laughs> he's got like, what, um, Oh, I don't even know. What? Like, 100? Not 100, maybe. He's got like 170 times the amount of subscribers I have, which is well, a lot. So, um, I, I can't imagine you're not subs him, but if you're not, you should check him out. He's a, he's a cool guy. He's in, uh, he's in the UCL. You know? But uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. This has been Redithin, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching yet again, and goodbye.